One of my viewers asked me the other day about my mailbox. My railroad switch stand mailbox. I came down here today to put this board back on here. I hit it with a lawnmower the other day. That'll be a good time to talk about this mailbox. Actually, the board needs to be dug out. I need to come down here with a shovel and dig it out. Alright, that board there will hold it until I get down here to fix it. See how this curve comes into the mailbox? I'm going to tell you a story about this mailbox. It's made out of iron. And when I acquired it, it was a working switch stand. Obsolete type that the railroad no longer used and it was out in the woods. One of the track supervisors told me where to look for it and I went and found and dug it up and kept it. I could have got two of them at the time, it wasn't smart enough. But this was a working railroad switch stand. I brought it home and made a mailbox stand out of it. Well, I was talking to you about this curve. I'll sit on the lawnmower and show you. And it's been broke. And I'll tell you how it got up. See how it got broke right across there? I welded it back together. I welded it there. I welded it somewhere up in here where it got broke. But it was in about five different pieces. So as a result, this will no longer rotate anymore. I had to weld everything solid down here where it used to pivot. So it's still a heck of a mailbox stand, but it's no longer a working railroad switch stand. I say that fellow's in a hurry. But the story I want to share with you today in regards to that mailbox, it's pretty heavy by the way. Like I told you, it's made out of iron. It's getting late in the evening. A drunk guy came down that road from the direction of the mailbox. He was in a red Ford pickup truck and he was hauling some kind of buggy. I was sitting up there on the front porch. This was a good many years ago. And when he hit the curve about where you see that car right there, he didn't straighten up and follow the curve. I don't know if he fell asleep or ran off the road or what. But he took out that second mailbox down there and knocked it over. That next one right here, the next guy's driveway, knocked that mailbox over. Came down through here, knocked over my railroad switch stand. And he hit it so hard, the switch stand was off over there, the other side of the property. Broke all the pieces. Well, by that time, his Ford truck was rolling. He rolled it down the highway here. It flipped two or three times. Pieces of truck was laying everywhere. It was upside down out here in the street. And I called 911, told him better send the ambulance out here. Is anybody hurt? I don't know if there's anybody that hurt or not, lady, but there's pieces of car laying all over the highway. Now I can spend 20 minutes walking down there to ask them, are they hurt? Or you can go ahead and respond in ambulance out here and possibly save somebody's life. So I suggest you send an ambulance. I'll proceed down there and see what I can do for them. And I, went, I came down here and the guy was stuck up under the steering wheel of his truck. I helped him climb out. He was pretty drunk. He was bleeding in several places, but he, he wasn't hurt too bad. Well, to make a long story short, the highway patrol came, the uh, ambulance came. There was three Georgia State Patrol cars out here. The ambulance was sitting right about down there where they loaded his butt in the ambulance and was going to treat him for his injuries or whatever. 
Well, once they got him up in the ambulance, he decided he was going to haul off and hit one of them paramedics, which he did. He punched one of the paramedics and hurt him. Or she, I don't know if it was a male or female paramedic. Well, three of them big highway patrol officers walked in that ambulance, dragged his ass out of there, screaming and yelling, had him by both legs and both arms, brought him back here to one of the highway patrol cars and chucked him up in the back seat. He landed in there with a thud. And I said, ain't y'all going to take him to uh, the hospital? Oh, we'll take him after a while. He just refused medical treatment when he hit that paramedic. They made him lay out here and bleed in the back of that police car for a good 30 minutes before they hauled him out of here. And his car was taken away in pieces on a wrecker. That's my story about the mailbox post. We've had several accidents out here. And I don't know what it is about this curve that they can't seem to straighten their car out. Uh, we've had a person die right over there at the edge of the trees. I've had several cars wound up down there in the trees. But this curve is just kind of a magic place for people to rest. Not much of a moral to today's story, except just be careful when you're driving by a P. Walpar's house. The mailbox might just jump out and get you. I came out here today and dug up another post, loaded it over there in the car. I guess tomorrow I'll get out here and do some more. We're slowly getting there. I cleaned up a bunch of trash and rocks. It was hot and I didn't stay out here long, but I definitely got a little bit done. What? What is that noise? Somebody's shooting. 